Me and Nate, Nate Cox, we decided, you know, we love climbing in the Tetons. We've climbed the Grand a couple of times, the Grand Teton. So we're going to do the East Ridge, which is the longest climb on the Grand Teton. 4,000 feet of rock climbing. And we decide we're going to do it in August and we're not going to take sleeping bags. So we're going to do it as light as possible. And we just figure this is the way to do it. So we're going to take two days and then the second day we'll hike back out to the road. So first day goes marvelously. We're mostly in tennis shoes, scrambling up cool rock climbing. Uh, changed to our rock climbing shoes. We're scrambling up 1,000 feet past, getting a little steeper, a little sketchier, 2,000 feet past. And then we come to this amazing ledge to sleep on. And this is the best ledge we've seen all day. And we're not, we're not counting on seeing another one like this. So even though it's not quite dark yet, we're going to sleep on this ledge. And it turned out to be a very good choice. Because the next day we started off and the hard climbing started right from that point. So we put on our harnesses, got our rope out, and we were climbing through some very cool, steep, sometimes dangerous terrain. And uh, as we were going, we uh, were thinking, man, we have been climbing for a long time and there is still a lot of climbing ahead of us. And the sky is starting to get dark a little bit as the day goes on. We're like, wow, there must be clouds coming in. So pretty soon we're within a few hundred feet of the summit. And this thing is almost 14,000 feet tall. So we're well in the 13,000 foot range. It's hard to breathe and really just going for it. And uh, we start to hear booming thunder booming lightning in the distance We're like wow you know what nate a storm is brewing on the other side of this mountain that we can't see and pretty soon it's going to engulf us so we got to find another ledge of some sort so we're scrambling as fast as we can up this steep and jagged terrain and now we start to see lightning in the distance first to the north and then to the south we see these lightnings we're like okay, we have got to get to a place where we can have some sort of safety. And finally, we come across this little skinny sort of ledge thing. And in desperation, we're like, here's where we're going to do it. So if you're in a thunderstorm, first rule is you try and insulate yourself from the ground. So any electricity won't go up through you and it won't come down through you. So the only thing we had was sleeping pad and a rope. So Nate takes the pad, I take the rope. We coil it, I coil the rope up under me and kind of squat on it. And we take the end of the rope, loosely tie it around our waists, give ourselves 30 feet and tie it around the other guy's waist. Anything metal that's going to attract attention from lightning, we have to remove it and ditch it somewhere. So we're up here on the side of this mountain, very technical terrain, taking off all of our safety equipment and storing it around the corner. So in case lightning does destroy, then it'll hit that and not us, hopefully. So there we are on the side of this mountain. It's now completely dark. It's raining a little bit. And we hear this boom, 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 more frequently and just all the time, just coming around. And we're starting to see the lightning and, and hear it. And it's, you see the lightning and one 1,000, two 1,000, boom, thunder. And then you see the lightning, one 1,000, boom. And pretty soon it's almost instantaneous. There's all these shafts of lightning all around us. And I look over at Nate and his hair, it's straight up from static electricity. And I know what that means. It means we're in trouble. And I actually see the blue St. Elmo's fire coming up from the ground. The electrons are sparking and they're discoloring the air, making a blue blob go up into the air. That means lightning's about to strike. And <laughs> lightning's striking all around us. And I look over at Nate and I can tell he's saying the prayer of his life. And I'm doing the same. And somehow, some way, the lightning storm 
surpasses us without us being destroyed by lightning. But that was a really close call. So after the lightning storm passed, we patted each other on the back, smoothed down our electric hair, put our harnesses back on, climbed up to the summit, and to breathe a sigh of relief from the summit, we could see 360 degrees, and in the distance, we could see our thunderstorm lighten it up in the sky to the east. And uh, when we hiked down, we were able to reflect on just how blessed we were and how close of a call that was. Here's the lesson to take from this. Anything that can attract a lightning, you remove it from yourself. So anything that's going to attract harmful things to you, don't hang around with it. Put it away, put it around the corner, get rid of it, especially if you're in a lightning storm. Hey, I'm Jared. I'm the Lone Guide. So I really like helping people. And I have a lot of experience with adventures. I've done hundreds of adventures. Every adventure always has something go wrong. And getting alone is really similar to that. There's some kind of obstacle. What the guide does is helps you get over, around, or through those obstacles. Some people call them a lone officer. I prefer lone guide because that's really what we're doing, is we're taking you from your desire to have a loan all the way to closing your loan. First, I simplify the process. Second, I make house calls. And third, I really do have the best rates. We actually negotiate with the bank. We can loan the bank's money for cheaper than they do. We don't have the overhead. So give me a call. Let me be your loan guide.